Uh, we we'll start with the prayer, prasana. Ramo Raja Manish Sada Vijayate Ramam Ramesham Haje Rame Na Vijata Nishachar Chamu Rama Yatasmai Namaha Rama Nasti Parayanam Parataram Rama Shada Sosmyaham Rame Chitale Sada Bhotame Bhorama Mamudhara Rama Rame Ti Rame Ti Rame Rame Mano Rame Sahasra Nama Tattulyam Rama Nama Varanane Rama Nama Varanana Om Namati. I mentioned you last time, this is the last part of the Rama Riksha Stotram. See the Shiva Parvati Samvadaha. So the last part you see Varanana, it is referring to Parvati. Um, okay, so Happy New Year to you all. Idam Nutanam Samvatsaram Sarvebhya Chatrebhya Anyebhya Api Sukhanam Shantidam Jnanadam Sarvadam Bhuyat. Okay, let's start with revising what we did last time. Uh, I put the, um, I'm going to use two screens today so we can uh, switch back and forth. So, um, what we did last, so this I have one screen where we have the word document. Other document will have the uh, Ashtadhyayi and also the uh, um, Gita press, Gita page, and maybe also. What we're going to do from this class one word, which I hope will work well, is in the Pura Bhagaha, which is you know what we have going on right now. We will do some Vyakaranam rules, some Sandhi rules. We'll do that. We'll uh, talk about uh, sutras and things like that. In the second half, we'll do some reading. So I think everybody may not want you know too much Vyakaranam and vice versa. So hopefully this will be this will be kind of a different change of pace. Second half, we'll do the, some Ramayana reading. Some of you might know that the first first Adhyaya of Ramayana is called the Muda Ramayana, or the Bada Ramayana, or Sankshipta Ramayana. It is a Narada Valmiki Samvadaha. So we have the entire Ramayana story in 100 shlokas. So, so we'll try to read some of that um, starting in the second half. The first half we'll continue with the Pani Sutras because I think you need to know you need to do do both side by side. You should know some Vyakaranam, also do some reading. Um, so let us continue from where we were left last time to refresh your memory. Uh, if we go to the um, Ashtadhyayi Sutra part, I think we did we basically focused on five sutras last time, which from the Achandi Prakaranam. Now when I say Achadni Prakaranam, I'm talking about, you know, Siddhanta Kaumadi, where we talk about, you know, topic by topic. In Achadni, we had um, five rules, and we went a section called Samhitayam, um, the 6172 Samhitayam. This simply means in continuous speech. If the speaker decides to stop or, you know, break his, uh, um, break his sentence, then, then Samhitayam doesn't apply. Also mentioned to you that in poetry or in verse, which most of us will be reading that, like Ramayana or Gita or Bhagavatam, only the danda breaks the samhita. So until that, samhita should be nityam, but once in a while, you know, you will find some violations of that also. So, so that we in the samhita Majikara, we saw four, I think we saw five sutras. One is Eko Energy, number 6177. The sutra is complete in itself you don't require really any anuvrittis to complete a sutra. So, so in place of a ik vowel, you put a yan adesha, so when when ach follows, any vowel follows. So, ik, yes, you know, my sutra and it will a yan rilrak, so it's e, u, ru, ru. So in place of that, you put the haya varat lan, so ya, va, ra, la, respectively. Actually, in this case, what we do is that we choose the closest substitute. We, we looked at a sutram last time, Sthani Antara Tamaha. Sthani Antara Tamaha comes in the first Adhyaya, which is, you know, how do we choose? Because we have four items being substituted by four. So we have E, U, R, L, and Y, V, R, L. So which one do we choose? And that we use sutram, the Parivasha sutram. Parivasha means, you know, rules of the game. And there we use sutram sthaniyantara tamaha to see the place of pronunciation. So we decide in place of e, we want to use the ya. U becomes wa, 
the river becomes Repa, and this Repa is a special name. Okay, it's for the for the letter Ra. So the Rakara instead of Rakara, they say Repa. Hmm. Uh, nothing more than that. Um, so we used one one fifty Sthani Antara Tamaha. That's how we, we knew in place of what to put what. So I want to take a quick example. We can look at um, Bhagavad Gita, I think twelfth Adhyaya, which I have opened here. Mm. You can see right here. Uh, yeah, we have one right here. Ye cha pyaksharam avyaktam. So we have api followed by aksharam. So api plus aksharam, the, if you want to go to the uh, the word document, it will become the e will become into a yakara. Ye cha pyaksharam avyaktam. So I put uh, api plus aksharam. Uh, So in this difference, api plus aksharam, just a is enough for us. So we can do uh, we, the api became the e became yakara became apyaksharam. So we became apyaksharam, and so on. So that so that was the first rule that we looked at is eco energy. Uh, all these are very important rules. We are only going to look at very important rules in the sense of most application, you know, most heat ratio. Uh, the, the second one we do, which we looked at was uh, HO Yamaya. And I say first, second, there's no specific order here. But uh, just, uh, I guess, in, in terms of simplicity and um, importance, I'm saying first, second, like that. Otherwise, there's no other first, second, like that. Um, okay, so that we, this one was, equal energy was 6177. HO Yamaya was 6178 which uh, as you see on this screen, the 6178, uh, and that means we have an ajanta anga. So H means what? Ayong, ayauch. So A, O, I, au. Then we get yatha sanksham. So here we use different paribhasha. Yatha sanksham unudesha samanam. So that we got respectively. So the A, O, I, au respectively become I, Av, I, and Av. So that's also um, Achi Pare. So we get the Anuvritti of Achi from the from the Paraya Sutra, Achi Pare. So that was the that was second Sutra that we looked at. Now the third one we looked at was these two, the set of two, the uh, Ad Gunaha and Vriddhi Rechi. Ad Gunaha, Vriddhi Rechi. So the Ad means if there is a over and a means long or short uh, proceeding and followed by an arch letter, we'll get the guna as, as the eka deshaha. Now what happened was that because of this uh, ekaha pura parayoho is an adhikara which, which we are starting from 61984, this will be a single substitute in place of two. So in, place, in case of the ikurnachi and the hoyavayavaha, we had only one item was being replaced with one item. Now for the H O Yava Yava, we'll have two items replaced by one item. So the preceding Avarna and the following Ach will be replaced by the letter which is called Guna. Now what is Guna? We saw that in the very beginning of Ashtadhyayi, Adeng Gunaha. Adeng Gunaha. So, so the Akara and the Eng, the A O, these are called Guna letters. And between that, we, now we choose again the Sthanyantra Tamaha, the closest substitute. And we we, in, we, we uh, make substitution basing on that, the place of pronunciation, which matches. That's what we used. So that was one. The upper vada for that was Vruddhi Rechi. Is Anuvritti of Ad is coming down again from 87 to 88. So we have, if we have an over and a proceeding for by an, for by an H letter, but now, because it says Vruddhi Rechi. So again, H is A, O, I, O. Then there is the Eka Desha of the of the Vriddhi Varna, Vriddhi letter. So now what is Vriddhi? Vriddhi is Sutra, first Sutra Nashtadhyayi, Vriddhi Radha H. So we have long A and the H, so the I, O, these are Vriddhi letters. So that was that was what we, we saw we saw with that Sutram. And we also saw what is an Apavada. Apavada is a very important concept is that this is Panini's style of mentioning the general rule first. We start with the general rule, and then he'll cut out the subsets and come up with apavadas. 
In fact, there could be cases where the general rule, we have hardly anything left behind. Because the Apavadas have taken a bigger portion than what left for the what's called the Utsarga. So Utsarga may have not much left behind once the Apavadas have taken their share. So Uddhirechi has taken out a piece of that prior sutram, Adgunaha. So that so when basically when the when the age follows, the Uddhirechi uh, will will have to apply and not the Adgunaha. So that was the fourth sutra which we saw. We see examples as we go along. We, we, I'm going to try to do some rules in this first half. So when we leave, for example, if we have time, we'll do examples. And we'll, these are going to come all the time. Okay? These, are, these are very common sutras. Um, we'll be seeing many, many examples as we go along. And then we saw the Akastamani uh, Dirgha, which is a later rule. Uh, the Ashtadhyayi, I think this is 61101, if you can write it inside, Akastamani Dirgha. So when ak is followed by savarna, means it has to be an ak. So ak, we make it, if we can make it simple for us, we can make it akaha aki dirgha. When ak followed by ak, we get a dirgha. So this is also in the in the pura parayoho ekadesha. So eka pura parayoho. So we, this is also substitute in place. Two items get one substitute. So a plus a will give long a. E plus E will give Dirgha E, U plus U, and Ru plus Ru will give long Ru. And we also mentioned there's no long Ru in the, in the language in usage really. So we have only four. Long E, U, Ru, A, E, U, Ru. Uh, then we also talked about why does the Akastavani Dirgha um, overrule so many other sutras. Because if you have a situation of an A plus A, now, Ad Gunaha could take a claim to that. So the condition of Ad Gunaha was Ad followed by any Ach. So A plus A would qualify for that. So, but this, this sutra is, is a later rule in Ashtadhyayi, 61101. And we saw last time how we can break the ties when, when the Viprati Sheda is there, when there's a competition to have between two rules, we saw that if other means fail, the last, the last, Pariyaya, the last way out is to look at the parakaryam. So, Akasamidirga is parakaryam to the Adgunaha. So, so, when there is a clash, then Akasamidirga will, 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 uh, will overrule. So, so, that's what we did last time in brief. Um, now, what I'd like to do is take at least one more sutram for uh, this Atsandhi. So, you can see this 61109 on your screen. Ingaf padantadati. Ingaf padantadati. Now what's happening here is that this sutra says ingaha, so following an ing letter. Ing means a o. And padantad. This should be a padanta. Ing. Of course, immediately you have to ask what is padanta. So padanta means padasyantad at the end of a pada. Then what is pada? So, so that we have to go to um, the first adhyav of Ashtadhyay, where Pani defines most definitions come over there, you know. Actually, I didn't know, mentioned to you last time, in, I think it was in Harvard program, they had one semester course where they only had the Sanya Adhikara. So, can you imagine how boring that will be? Only get Sanyas, nothing else. So, you know, what, what is, what is Pada, what is Bha, what is, what is, you know, Ji, what is Gu, all that you get, and you know what is gati, what is upasarga, what is sarvanama sthanam, what is sarvanama, and then people are dropping out. But then they realize that if you if you understand these sannyas very well, it is it is it is beautiful because from then on you know exactly what is what. Um, so sannyas are important. They're kind of that's why Apani puts them in the first adhyaya. So that is the ashtadhyayi kramaha the Ashtadhyayi sequence. Nowadays people don't have patience for that, so we kind of pick them and choose them as we as we go along. Um, so here you can see here in this 1.4.14, Pani says, Supting Antam Padam. Supting Antam Padam. Now this sutra tells you that anything which ends with a sup affix or a ting affix is called gets a padasanya. The one thing I should warn you is that this is not the only sutra which gives Padasanya. Padasanya can come from other places also. 
But for us right now, this is good enough. Supti, this is the main sutram. Supti antam padam. So now the question comes, what is sup and what is thing? So these are also from Ashtadhyaya itself. If you look at so the sup or what we call as a nominant declensional affix, you know, the pratyas which we add to the nominal basis, the pradipadi comes. So when we say ramas or rama abhyam, so that bhyam or the or the su or the um, they are called supaffixes. And these are all given in one single sutra. It's a very musical sutra of Ashtadhyayi from this 412, this one. 412. Now I think Shankarji may have mentioned to you that pratyaharas are, not, are formed not only from the Mahesha Sutrani, so they're also formed from, from the sutra part also. So when you say sup, it means starting from this first su, this has gone through sandhi, it becomes swau just. So these are all these 21 endings are, are clubbed together upon in, in one sutra. So from su to this ending pa is what is called a sup. So so just the mouth, uh, like that it goes, chasta, bhyam, this, so all these 21. So any any word form which ends in one of these 21, so gets a padasanya. It's called subbanta. Subbanta means, means it's a declined form. So similarly, the, the thing also is a pratyahara. So also found in Ashtadhyayi itself. So and it says, well, let me go back to that 412 for a second. So if you look at the 411, it starts a major adhikara vashtadhyaya. It says, ni a pratipadikat. So any pratipadikam that is there has to take one of these 21 endings in 412 pretty much immediately. So, so we should not use words which are not declined. They say, you know, they say that um, you should not use a... Um, Pradipadi come on its own. You only use the uh, padas which are formed. You say apadam na prayunjita. Apadam na prayunjita. One should not use words in Islam which are not padas. Which we do in Hindi or Gujarati or Telugu or Marathi, which we say that. Arjun kya bola? Arjun? No. You say Arjunaha. Ki muktavan. So Arjunaha. So unless you use that supratya, you should not say Arjun. So that is because of this sutra. It says Pratipadikat, this Niya Pratipadikat, so, and this 412 is Nitya Karim. It has to take one of the declension any before it can be used. So so these are coming after nominal basis, and they, these are one of these 21. So, now the thing, thing antaras, this thing Pratyaya is also Pratyahara, and that is formed in the 3.4 so, in the, it's in the Lasya Dikara what we call as verbs. We form, you know, these are called conjugations. Verbal, these are English terms, you know, they call them nominal declension and verbal conjugations. We finally just said Subhantan Tingantas. So it's 3, 4, 78, from this Tiptasji, Tiptastha, Mipvasmas, which is, these are these 18 endings. And it's defined into, split into two parts, it's 9 plus 9. So the first nine are Parasnipada endings, the next nine are Atmanipada endings. Here also you see the price of them in Lasya. Lasya. Lasya is that finally defines all these tenses and moods as the, what causes the ten L's. So like, let, lit, lut, you know, lot. So like that it goes. Let, lit, lut. There are ten of them. Let, lit, lut, lut, lot. Then lung, get the uh, ling. These two kinds, the, the Ashi Ling, the Vidhi Ling and the Ashi Ling, then the Lung and the Rung. These are the, um, these are the 10 L's, but we see them later. But any, any one of them you use, immediately you have to substitute these, these, um, one of these 18 endings. So, so that tells us that, that any completed word in the language should, should end in one of these 18 plus 21 equals 39. So every word, this is a good exercise in itself, is to identify which one of these 39 is being used. Every every word has to end with this one of these 39. So that is what is called, uh, so this tiptaji up to this ing, mahing, mahing, uh, id, vahi, mahing, 
So thing is from this T to the nu is called thing. So any so the word form which ends in one of these 39 gets the other status. And then so now we're going back to what we're talking about um, about the ing of padanta the t. So if we have a a or a o at the end of a pada, followed by ati. Ati means akare pare, short a. Um, then what happens? Let's bring the sutra up again. Ing of padanta the t. Then the pura rupa is the ekadesha. The ekadesha is the pura rupa itself. See, when we saw the echo yava yavaha, we did have an ekadesha, but the ekadesha was something new coming in. So if A was followed by an H, we may bear it into an I. So the I was the adesha, so in place of the A plus the H. Now here what is happening is that when we have the ing followed by the ati, so the ekadesha is the is the is the pura param is, is is the purva. So the a plus O, A or O, I should say, sorry, A or O followed by A will be replaced by the A or O itself. In short, this, in short, it means that that A is kind of lost. If you take a quick example, um, you take, um, okay, let's see if you take example like Guru Ava. So, O oh, Guru, protect me. Make it guru plus ava. Ava rakshane, ava is protect. So now we see we have the padan, this is a decline form. This is a sambuddhi ending, this is a vocative ending. So we make guru plus ava. We have the ing which is padanta, which is the o in this case. And we do have the short of falling. Assuming this is samhitayam, this is continuous speech. Then, then between this O and the R, the Ekadesha is the Pura Param, which is the, the Pura, Pura is the, is the O. So in short, this, this A is, is lost. But this is not a Lopaha, it's still the Pura Pura Ekadesha of the Pura Rupam. So, now what happens is that there is this symbol called the Avagraha, so, which is used to indicate this loss of the, loss of the, loss of the A. Uh. Now this avagraha is not really, it has no value for pronunciation, which is very important. So when you pronounce, you should not include that, um, include that A uh, in the in the pronunciation. So you should say gurova, say gurova, not guroava, so that gurova. In fact, in the old palm leaves, there was no avagraha. So, so in this, it was like this, gurova. But nowadays, to make it easy for us, they put the Avagraha. So, so Avagraha is also the editor's choice. Okay? That is not in the, because this is, you know, because this is a Vak Parampara. This is spoken language. So, so that means that if Avagraha is there, it is not in the original text. In the Gita, there are at least two shlokas. Maybe actually there are more, but maybe at least two. Where the Avagraha, you can take it is there. It is not there. Let's look at one quickly. Um, look at one shloka of Bhagavad Gita where you can see the avagraha. You can take it as being there or not being there. So, in the first, in the very first adhyaya, um, you can say that you know there is Arjuna says, "Narake niyatam vaso bhavati chanu shushra." Narake niyatam vasaha. So you say narake. Uh, let me find the. Um, let me find the. Um, Shloka for you, first adhyaya. Excuse my phone, by the way. Um, go to the first adhyaya. You can say narake niyatam vasaha. We can take it as niyatam vasaha, or say it as aniyatam vasaha. So both of these will have, you know, will have their own meaning. So Arjuna says that we will we will dwell in hell definitely, or we'll we'll will dwell in hell indefinitely it's for a long time. So in that case, you know, the avagraha may be there, it can be narake niyatam vasaha, narake niyatam vasaha api sambhavati. Okay, let me pull up the uh, shloka for you if I can find, it's towards the end of the uh, first adhyaya. Um, similarly, uh, 
which is right before the Ahobata Mahatpatam. Um, okay, here we go. See this, is, the Gita Press has put the Avagraha here. Is Narike Niyatam Vas. Let me switch my screen so you see that what I'm talking about. Okay. See here it is on the shloka number 44, the first Ajaya. See Narake Niyatam Vasaha. So Vasu will become Visasandhi. So now it's, they have made it Narake and followed by Aniyatam. So we have the sutra that we are learning right now, the Eng of Padanta Dati. So Narake that A is the Eng. Aniyatam is the short A and therefore the, you get the Pura Pariva Ekadesha of the Purva. So the only the A remains and the oil lost and that's indicated by that Avagraha sign. So now somebody could say that the A was not there to begin with. It was Narake Niyatam Vasa only. So we'll give the same final form. Of course the Avagraha will not be there. It means that we will dwell in hell indefinitely. Niyatam Vasa, or it could mean we will we will definitely dwell in hell. So both are both meanings fit the context. So same thing comes in 18 the house, it comes in Gita. It comes in many places. So so many times when you have it's a very very dangerous uh, kind of situation where you have the padanta a or o, followed by the short a. You 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 don't know whether you know the, that that a was there or not there. Um, and you should take this avagraha with a pinch of salt, and that is what is indicated by that particular editor. That, so it just was not in the original text. When you pronounce, you should say, Narake niyatam. Narake niyatam vasa bhavati shushruma. So that's what the sutra says. This will also be very useful for us. It will come in many places. You can see. And sometimes when they put this double avagraha and all that, that gets a little bit cheeky. When you know, when, when you, sometimes you do akasrami dirgha, when you would like atma, rama, you put double avagraha. That is, you know, not very uh, stylistic. Sometimes they use that also. In case you see, in case you see double avagraha, means that there should be a long A was lost there. Not in this rule, but you might see that symbol somewhere coming. So that is one one Ashtandi rule which I think we didn't do last time. This is important. Now with these six rules, you should be able to deal with most of the Ashtandis in Gita. There are there are still about two, three places which we, which, which Sandhi has not been done. A um, couple of them, of course, are in the Ashtadhyayi, and one of them is not been done, just the speaker's choice. Uh, Vyasaji has not done the, in fact, let's look at them very quickly. Um, uh, in the twelfth Adhyaya, um, there is the, uh, one, one place where Sandhi has not been done. That, that is pretty rare for Gita. Read, see the Gita conforms to Panini very closely. Some of the scriptures don't. Um, so that's why it is good to learn, even though we will be doing Ramayana in the second half of this class, um, Valmiki doesn't follow all the Panini rules. In fact, some of them he, he blatantly highlights. Of course, you can say that, that maybe Valmiki came, came before Panini. Either way, the, the Ramayana does not conform to Panini as closely as Gita does. It conforms to the most part, but there are a number of places where it doesn't conform. So, let's look at one place in Gita where Sandhi has not been done. So, um, you have to go down a little bit. Um, uh, okay, here, here it is, we found it. Number eight. Nivasishya simayeva ata urdhvanna samshayaha. Look at this one, between Mai Eva, of course in Mai and Eva you have the Yarn Sandhi. So Mai plus Eva, we had the E followed by the A, became Mai Eva. The E became into a Ya, Eko and a Chi, so that Sutra is there. But then between the Eva and the Atta, we should have had the Akasamri Dirgha here. Should have had, um, but it has not been done. This is the one place in the Gita where the, the Akastami Dirgha Sandhi has not been done. Just to make it clear on the uh, other screen, um, we have had uh, Eva and Ataha. So when you do Eva plus Ataha, Eva plus Ataha, now, we should have had the, between, between the, um, 
between the va, this this a which is here and this a should become evataha. Should have become evataha. Uh, but this sandhi has not been done. Evataha. Now, one more thing to keep in mind is most of these violations you will find come at the end of a metrical padaha. So going back to the shloka again, um, you will see that, so as you see, eight, eight syllables make a padha, right? You say, nivasish, nivas, nivasishya, si, mai, eva. That is, that is eight. So here ends the padha. Next padha stands, starts from here. Ata urdhvanna samshayaha. So now that, that this juncture, a little bit of leeway is there, and uh, that sometimes sandhi is not done. You should be you should be ready for that. Gita only few very few violations, but other scriptures many more violations. So between two padas of a meter, there is, there are times when sandhi is not done by some authors. Now let me also point you one more thing while we are here um, between atha and urdham. This is not a sandhi violation. If you look at the padacheda, it is ataha urdham. So there is a visarga here, ataha urdham. So therefore this visarga, something happened and as we saw in the last class when we saw the purotra siddham, some operation has happened in the tripadi section, which is now preventing the rule adgunaha from operating. Something in the tripadi section has operated and that is is not being seen by the Sapada Saptadhyayi. So therefore, so this is not a Sandhi violation because this is just this Purvatra Siddham, the 8 to 1, which is kicking in and, and, and preventing for the Sandhi. But this one is a Sandhi violation because it says, look at the Padacheda, it just says Eva and Ataha. So nothing, there was nothing in between there. So clearly there was nothing else happening there, the Sandhi violation. So so anyway, you will find that you can do at least 90% of all Ashtanis in Gita with from the sixth sutra. They give you great bang for the buck. So I highly recommend you do as many of this can on, as you can on your own. Right here we have another sutra, Mayyeva. This is also a Yan Sandhi, Mayyeva. So every, every other shloka you will find some Yan Sandhi or the other. Every shloka you go, you will find, I'm sorry, some Ash Sandhi or the other you will find. Um, she looked here. Ananya naiva yogena. Ananyena eva. So this is Buddhirechi. See so if you look at the Padacheda down here. Uh, Ananyena eva. Ananyena eva. So you see Ananyena is down here and followed by eva. So you had the Avarna preceding followed by the H. Pura parayoho. Eka pura parayoho. And you got the Buddhirechi. Ananya naiva yogena. So there are many, many, many Sandhis. Um, another Yant Sandhi is here, Maya Veshya Chaitasam. So please practice. Please try to go as many as you can. If you have any questions, let us know. But you should be able to do 90% of Sandhi, not only in Gita, even Ramayana Mahavatam, the Padanta Ach Sandhi is now, with these six rules, should be able to tackle most of them. Okay, so that's one topic. The next thing that I'd like to do is that, uh, and we'll practice more, every shloka we do, we'll, we'll, we'll mention these rules. One thing I would suggest is that even though you know that A uh, plus A uh, obviously is long A, it's very, it's very logical, it's very intuitive, but please mention the sutra, Akas Savani Dirgha. The more sutras you get in your bag, you'll have more confidence and there will come a point that you say, ah, now I have enough of a base to learn more. If you know the, if you know the Utsarga as well, Apavadas you can learn because you know you should, you should be able to say with confidence that, oh, this should have happened here. It has not happened. Okay. I can look it up now, and mostly I'll find it probably close to my Utsarga rule. I'll find this Apavada somewhere. Most likely, you'll find it there. So, so even though it may be obvious to like Mai Avika Mai Aveshita is, is it's kind of an obvious thing because Mai plus Aveshita. And again, the Sandhi rules Pani did not create. He only described the way the language was in the Vedas and Mahabharatam. So these obviously the tongue the tongue moves that way. Say Mai plus Aveshita, it becomes Mai Aveshita. Sandhi rules come in, come in English also, Sandhi rules comes. We say, we say, in legal becomes illegal. So, in legal becomes in legal. That's also a Pani rule, totally. We will we see it later. It's also in English. That's the way the tongue moves. It's, you know, no matter what language it is, 
you know, we can, you know, we, we can see some of these rules. Um, so please practice these rules. Now one next topic I want to see is that called Anuswara Sandhi. So just see those two. Now for the first time you're going to be seeing a sutram in the Tripadi section now. So what does that mean? That means that all the rules of the first seven Adhyaya and, and also the first part of eight Adhyaya, the seven dot one, have already applied, they have done their job, they are happy, they are finished. And now the second routine starts, which is the, so Pani wants basically all these rules to have done their functions. Then only will come to where we are going now. So that is why you might think, you know, as I mentioned to you last time also, is why we are going so far in the Jai to learn such a basic rule. This should be like in the first page. No, because the order in Ashtadhyayi is such that, that Many, many other rules have to take precedence, not in terms of importance, maybe, but in terms of operation. So they have to, they have to do their job first, so before we can go down so far. Okay, so from, uh, uh, always keep in mind where you are in the Ashtadhyayi, okay? Um, and particularly whether you are in the Sapada Saptadhyayi or you are in the Tripadi section. So, A21 is Purvatra Siddham, see there, Pur Purvatra Siddham. Purvatra Siddham. Purvatra means that in the eyes of all the prior sutras, all seven adhyayas and these eight dot one, what we are going to do now is a Siddham, as if it has not happened. They don't, they don't see it, which means that they will go on their merry way, ignoring this. So they should be given, they should do all their things, then we come here. Okay. So we are now in the, um, look at the sutram called Mon Swaraha. Um, Monuswaraha, and that will be that will be here uh, in 8.3 actually. Um, so even 8.2 is finished. Now we are in 8.3. Um, so Monuswaraha, and it says Anurutti of of Hali is coming down, and we also in this Adhikara called Padasya. Adhikara Padasya starts from 8.1 8, itself. The Padasya Adhikara starts. So we are in the Padasya Dikara. See this Padasya Dikara goes a long way, this 8116 Padasya. So these rules apply for only the words ending in that. Padas Padas ending in that. Whatever whatever it might be. So current rule is going to say Monuswaraha. So the Makara, the letter Ma, becomes Anuswara. So when a hull follows, when any any consonant follows. So that's what it's going to say. But it has to be Padanta Makara though, not any Padanta. So let's go to 8324, um, say Very, the individual Pani rules are simple. If you take them one by one and understand them bit by bit, that is the greatness of Pani, that he, he takes the language and, and chops it down into manageable bits. So, and these are the smallest bits that he could make. So, so Monuswara, we're looking at 8323. Let me show this application. I think most of you might have the Ganaka Ashtadhyayi, which is available online, where you can see that, unfortunately, in my Vista machine, I have a problem downloading that. But I have this other application created by, created by Kalpeshti, which allows me to go to any sutra very quickly. Um, so on the top, if I just put a sutra number, I can go to a sutra. Um, so this is the, I think someone in the last year asked the question, rightfully so, is how do you get the vritti from, where do you get the vritti from, and this is where you can get it from, is two places you get vritti, vritti means it explains the whole sutra in a sentence, you know, it includes all the anuvrittis and maybe any paribhasha, any interpretation, everything is now put in a big sentence for you, nice, but now why in point you do that, because of course you memorize so much more, see monaswara is a very nice small thing. The Vritti tells you what? Makarasya Padantasya, it is right here. Makarasya Padantasya Anuswaraha Adesha Bhavati Hali Paritaha. You memorize, the whole thing has to be memorized by you now. Or at least remember in some way or the other. That's why the Paninis Monuswaraha is a, um, is short and sweet, you can remember it. But the problem with that is that you have to remember the whole, all your Anuvrittis, etc. So this is a nice application which we'll also put on the web page. You can download it. Uh, it's very easy. It's the same same material which is coming from the Ganaka Stadhyayi. 
website just organized so you can uh, jump to sutram and just look at it very quickly. So it's amazing that this this kashika vritti which is now we are using right now, some student in Japan, I think had a project where he typed the whole kashika and made it available to everybody. It's very nice of them to do it. Like a lot of Buddhists in Japan, there are a lot of Buddhists that do, and there are texts also in Sanskritam, so they have they study a lot. Um, and amazing people, but anyway, so this is what they have made available to us, so we can we can use it. Um, it's also searchable. So it says Monuswara says Makarantasya, sorry Makarasya, Padantasya. So if you have a Pada ending in a Ma, it gets the Anuswara Adesha. So Hali Parataha to be followed by Hal. We see some examples quickly now, but this very, so this is, now we already learned what is Pada, right? Is Supti Gantam Padam. So if you have a Subanta or a Tinganta Pada ending in a Makara, followed by a Hal, should be Pada, then that will become, become an Anuswara. So what is Anuswara? Anuswara is not in the Mahesha Sutra. Because Anuswara comes generally, might come on its own to some mean, but it also comes mostly through a Ma or a Na. Right now we are looking only at a Ma giving an Aswara. We we'll see the Sutra which is even a Na can become an Aswara. But Na becomes only when it is not Padanta. So far we are only focusing only on Padanta Sandhi rules. So this is the only one we need right now. Is that Padanta Makara become an Aswara. Now how is the Makara pronounced? What is the place of pronunciation of that? It is very badly pronounced in a number of places. Um, it is uh, Dushtam Ucharnam Bhavati Bhavushusthan Eshu Deshe Eshu Api So what happens is that it should, it should be a pure nasal sound so, Nasika Anuswarasya So that's what Shiksha Satsum says It should not be the any of those Vargyas So what happens if you have word like Saun Saraha If you go to South India Dakshina Bharata Deshe Janaha Vadanti Sam Saraha Iti Ayuktam, that is not correct. Because that would happen if you make it samsaraha, your lips are joining, it has become an oshtya sound. That is not correct. If you go to Uttar Bharata Desha, if you go, you go to, you know, Kashi, what do they say? Maha samsar bulte, sansar, sansar. This is sansaraha. This is also not correct. That becomes into a dental sound. So neither the na sound nor the ma sound is correct for anuswara. Now, Pani doesn't see this is what is called Shiksha Satram. So, Shiksha means how to pronounce the letters. Pani assumes that you already know that. Isn't this is Vyakarana is different. See, there are six Vedangas. Shiksha is a separate Shastram on its own, different from Vyakarana. Of course, there's an overlap because some of the Shiksha rules we need to know for Vyakarana and vice versa. So, so but clearly in Shiksha, and then the best place to learn how to pronounce these things, look at the Vedic chanting, how they do. So if once you read from a book, you know, you, you are going to make your own chant, your own pronunciation rules. If you get from the, you know, Guru Mukhat, then that, that's the way you want to know. So generally that their chanting is probably the best. You see how they chant. So probably something like Saun Saraha, Saun Saraha is, is one of the better ones. Sam Saraha is wrong. San Saraha also is wrong. And we see more clarification next time. So, so this, this is the uh, first tool we're going to do today. Mon Swaraha, in place of Ma, only a single Ma, nothing else, just in place of Ma. The Prota Anuswara, which is given by the dot, is signified by the dot on top. So, and only if it's followed by Hal, it should be Padanta Ma. Quickly go to Gita, some couple of quick examples, you see that. Uh, it comes in almost every shloka, you'll find this. Here we have it. Yetu sarvani karmani mai sanyasya matparaha ananyena eva yogena mandhyayanta upasate so mandhyayanta. If you see this one, ma'am, if you come down here in the Padacheda, you will see ma'am. Now, if you have, um, yetu sarvani mai sanyasya matparaha. Here, here it is, ma'am. So this is a, this is a subanta ending ending in ma followed by the dhakara which is a hal so therefore the ma became anuswara very very simple rule really nothing complicated so monuswara
the next tool, almost every every shloka will have this. Every other shloka will have this. So, next shloka, right here. Mai buddhim niveshaya. Buddhim. Same thing. Buddhim means you have a padanta makara, or with a nakara, which is a hal. So, it became a anuswara. Down here, one more down here. Urdhvan na samshayaha. So, urdhvam padanta makara, followed by the na. So this will be another homework for you if you have time. Please find all these ma endings and see what follows. And if it is a if it is a hull, see when the once the danda comes, nothing is falling, okay? So when the danda comes, this will, it will not become anuswara. You will not have anuswara for by danda. Because there the there this is we we, we need a hull to follow. Danda means nothing is falling. Samhita is broken. So if you, if you find places where you will find that there is no, the ma is at the end of a pada, it will, it will not give, become one. Say here, here is a good one, okay, here is one. Ma is thiram. So thiram you have in shloka, this is all in chapter 12 by the way, okay. So thiram you have makara, it is padanta, everything is okay, but it is not followed by a hal, you know, nothing is following. It will not become into one spara. On the other hand, this one here, chittam makara followed by sa. Then samadhatum <coughs> is makara followed by na. So they became anusvaras. Now how about down here? Maam ichhaptum dhananjaya. Maam ichhaptum. So we had maam plus ichha. Now the e is not a hal. So that did not become anusvara. So you can check this rule, make sure it applies. Because maam plus ichha, that maam, the makara was, it is padantha. It is makara, that's good, but then following is not a hal, it is a ach following. It doesn't become anuswara. So please practice this rule. Um, any makara in Gita should be able to check it now. So every time you see a makara, ask two questions. Is it padanta? Is it followed by a hal? If it is, it should become anuswara. So as simple as that. Um, next thing I want to look at is this, what is called as the um, Anuswara se yehi parasavarnaha. This rule comes in the 8.4 section now. So notice we are skipping from 8.3, it's 23. We are going to 8.4. What does that mean? Is that is all these rules in between which are coming now, they will see Anuswara only. The Anuswara has not changed until we go to 8.4 something. The rules in between, they will not see the this 8-4 where we are going to right now, Anuswasa Yiparasavarnaha. That will, they will not see that operation. Because I mentioned to within the Tripadi itself, a later rule is not seen by an earlier, earlier rule. So within that 8-2, 8-3, 8-4, a later rule operation is not seen by an earlier rule. So, so when we see the uh, Anuswasa Yiparasavarnaha, which is 8458, what it says is that if you have anuswara followed by yai letter, yai, from hayavarat up to kapai. So, so yai equals what? Yai equals all hulls minus the, the sha, sha, sa, and the ha. So excluding these, if any other consonant follows, then it becomes the parasavarna. It matches the it becomes, it goes and matches the, that family, the Savarana family. Um, quick example, if you see, um, take you to the word document for a second. Um, okay. So if you say, if you see a word like Pankar Vashi. So word like, take a word like Ganga, okay. Ganga, or Shankara, let's try that. Um, become Shankaraha. Let me, make it, let me keep it as first the makara for you. So it's shang, sham plus karaha. Mm -hmm. Shang karaha. Now, this ma, even though it's not, it is, we, it's not supting antam padam right now, but this ma is also a, is going to be a padanta ma. It's going to become into a, by another different rule, but take my word for time being, and also going to become into a anuswara, to become 
become Shankara. It will become because it's a very common word, so we start with that uh, Shankara. Now what happens is that it, it, because the ka is following, in the ka, ka work, the ka family is what ka, ka, ga, ga, nga. So the Anuswara has to go and match one of these five. Of course, it's, it's, it has a nasal component. It's going to match the pancham, pancham varana only, the fifth, fifth letter, which is nga. So it becomes shankaraha. That, that is what is, is said by this rule. is Anuswarasya yai parasavaranaha. So when you have the yai letter following, the Anuswara then becomes the parasavarana. Now, before we go into any, any applications, look at the next rule, which says that vapadantasya. Um, switch back to that screen, the Ashtadhyayi screen, and it says vapadantasya. So it means that if the Anuswara is, is, is a padanta Anuswara, this operation is va. It's optional. So Anuswara can stay Anuswara, or it can become the parasavarana. Now, as a matter of convention, in writing, they will put the Anuswara only. They will not put the Parasavarana letter. Even though it is equally correct, as a convention, they will not produce, put the put the Parasavarana letter. Let us take a quick example. Let us go to Gita, back to Gita. So, the Sutra Vapadantasya says that if you have a Padanta Anuswara followed by a Yai, it becomes a uh, Parasavarana letter optionally. And right now we are looking at Padantas only. So for us, we, we need this 8459. If you want, we can also go to Kashika for a second. Um, go to 8459. Okay. It says Anuswarasya Yai Parataha Va Parasavarana Adesho Bhavati. Look at this Kashika example. Twang Kathanchid. So it gives some, some long example. It gives Pakshand and Dayamana. He, he combines all of them. <laughs> he gave all of them. He combined one, one long thing. This example, this is how these people, con these <laughs> examples which are given in these texts are sometimes really amazing, you know. How they come up with these ways to combine, to give the entire, you know, force of the rule in one example. You know, it says, uh, this twang, kathan, chitra pakshan, dayamanan, navastam, purusho, avadit. So, it says, <laughs> so it gives all the five, ex all the five of them he is using one single example. So, the padasya will be, tam, katham, chitra paksham, dayamanam, navastam, purushaha, avadit. So, how did that man kill that kill that uh, bird which had wonderful wings which was flying in the sky. <laughs> Amazing example. But the way they do this and they done that because he's giving you the C twang. He's given you the kavarga. See? Then then so kavarga is coming in the twang. Then he gives the kathan chit kathan kathan is the chavarga. Then chitra pakshan gittavarga. Dayamanan gives the Tavarga, Navastham gives the Pavarga. So he has in one sentence given you all the five Parasavarna possibilities. And he also gives a separate one, Tam, Katham, Chitrapaksham, Dayamanam, Navastham, Purusho, Avadit. So now you can see how much effort goes into these examples that they construct, you know. Of course, this is a little, little bit of a funny thing, but, but that's how the, he has given all five possibilities. So, tam is that word. Katam means how. Chitrapaksham, which has wonderful or strange wings. Dayamanam, which is flying. Navastham, in the sky. Purushaha, the, that, that man. Avadheet, how did he kill that bird? So, that shows you all the, all the Parasavarna possibilities. Now, the reason he gave both of them was, see, because we said it was Va Padante, right? Va Padantasya. So in, in this case, he kept the Anuswara as Anuswara without changing it. So you can either make it Parasavarana or you can, or you can have the Anuswara. It's two possibilities. Now in the Gita, when we saw, this, this, this first form where the Parasavarana is being done is not given in most of these texts. Only in Vyakarana books you will find this kind of thing being done. 
But now the important thing is pronunciation. When you pronounce, you should try to do the prasavarana. But you should not. Let's go to Gita Shloka. Okay, let's look at one. Huh? Um, okay. Now what happens is that look at this first one. Chittam samadhatum. Now chittam is anuswara is there. It is padanta, followed by the sa. Now what happens here? The sa is not a yai. So we saw anuswara here. Yai parasavarnaha. But the sa is not a yai because we start with kapai. The kapai the ends the yai ends in kapai. The sharsha sa are not in the yai. So this anuswara will remain anuswara only. There is no choice here. Chittam plus samadhatum. The sakara is not a yai. So it will not, it will not become anything else. There is no, the sakara is single. He has no family. So there is no question of making parasavarnaha because he has no nasal member inside him. So it's going to be just sa. So it will be chit chittam. Chittam will be just the like saung saraha. Chittam. But the next one, samadhatun na shakno. See, now look at this one. Samadhatun is anuswara, followed by a na. Now tathadadhana. So this samadhatun can become samadhatun. This anuswara can be, and if possible should be, pronounced as a nakara. Samadhatunna. Samadhatunna. Now what happens is that when most people chant, they will say Samadhatunna. Make it into a ma, which is not correct. It should either be a, a anuswara or preferably parasavarna. So uh, please, uh, uh, of course it's not, a, it's not a big error, but try to when you chant, make it either Samadhatunna Samadhatunna, Samadhatunna Shaknoshi. This is kind of hard because you have to keep track of what is following while chanting. Keep track of what is following. And that's difficult. So if you, if, you, if you want to make it easier on yourself, you can just make the Anuswara only. But if you want to make it more stylistic, you should make it Parasavarna. Now this rule is only, option is only when it is Padanta. If it's not Padanta, you should make it should make it into prasavarna necessarily, like the word Ganga. Gang, Ganga, you should not say Ganga, because Ganga is, is, is inside a Pada, you have that prasavarna has happened there. So it should become Ganga only, and as far as possible Shankaraha, not Shamkaraha, not Shankaraha, but Shankaraha. So, so these are two sort of we saw today. We saw Monuswara. We say if you have Makara Padanta followed by a Hal, it becomes Anuswara. And again, you have, you have many examples in Gita, tons of them. Please practice. Check every Makara. Is it Padanta? Is it followed by a Hal? Then it should become Anuswara. Then we saw the Parasavarna rule. But the Parasavarna is Va Padanta. Because of the Va, in writing, the convention is not to make the Parasavarna in writing. And the convention is for the, for the reason that if they put samadhatunna, <coughs> let me go to my word document for a second. If you put samadhatunna, then the reader may not know whether this was a na to begin with or did it come because of the parasavarna rule. So if you put it like that, if you put it down there, if you put as samadha, I'm sorry, dhatunna. Now, I don't know whether that, that, that this was samadhatum with the anuswara or whether it was a no to begin with. So that's why the convention is to keep it as anuswara in writing. But you can, you should pronounce it like this, samadhatum na. So, okay, so those are the anuswara rules, very simple, nothing very complicated. Please practice. Um, now what I'd like to do for, and we have only half an hour left in this first section now. So, um, I'd like to move on to some visarga rules. Also, great bang for the buck, almost every shloka, you'll find this, almost every shloka, you'll find some visarga or the other. So let's, let's go through that and see if we can at least build some framework today. Next week we'll, we'll do some more and hopefully we'll finish uh, bulk of them next week and take some practice after that. After these three are done, we can try to go into Gita and take a lot more examples because most of the sandhi, Padanta Sandhis we can tackle. So we got the Arch Sandhis. Gaudiya Nuswara Sandhi 
and now Visarga Swami. There are some more which you need to do, but this will get like 70, 80 percent we can do. So, okay. Now Visarga. What is this word Visarga? Dhatu is Sraj. Sraj means to release. Means to release. So Visarga means to release air, like you say Ramaha, Harihi, Guruho, Taihi. So this Visarga is, is releasing of exhaling air, you know, which comes. Now, in pronunciation, it does partake of the of the prior vowel. It only comes after a vowel, by the way. Visargas only come after a vowel. Anuswar also same thing. So, they only come following a vowel. So, and when you say guru, it becomes kind of uho, uho, hari, becomes hari, that ihi, ihi comes there. Ramaha becomes aha, aha. So guroho, that oho comes there. Now we say you say taihi and become like a ihi. That's a strange one. Because he said tai becomes then become tai hai. Becomes taihi, taihi, ramaihi. So okay. So that that others are others are intuitive kind of Ramaha can say Guruhu Harihi can say um Guruho. But when you say Ramaihi, almost like an E is coming there, you know, with the with the anyway the bottom line is that the Visarga is dependent on the prior vowel for its pronunciation. That exhaling is there, but exhaling is with that particular vowel which preceded it. So again, the Mahesha Sutra doesn't have Visarga in there. Why is that? There must be something there which generates the Visarga. Visarga will, will come most of the time from either a Repha or a Sakara. So let's jump into the Sutra. Let's see what we can do today. Maybe take at least some beginning Sutras. Um, the first one I want to introduce you is this sex, this what Panini called as a Ru, a special kind of Repha, which, I mean, Repha is just letter Ra, it's called Repha, Rakara. So Rakara is given a stylistic term, Repha. Um, this Sutra is 8266. This will be like a five star rule, five star plus rule. So give it a rating if you want. Um, here it is, such as you show Ruho. Oh, I'm on the wrong screen. Okay, let me switch my screen. Okay, so bring you back to the Ashtadhyayi screen. So okay, Sa Saju Sho Ruho. Look on the right hand side bottom here, 8266. Sa Saju Sho Ruho. So okay, now what does it say? It's also Padan, Padasya Dikara is running here. So again, we are in the Tripadi section. So all these Sapadi Saptadhyayi rules have already done their operation. And even in within 8.2, the first 65 rules have had their say already. So now we are in 8.266. So this says that the Padanta Sakara or the, the word Sajush, the single word Sajush, that ending Sha of that will become a Ru if it's Padanta. Now, this one thing of Pani Sutra I want to tell you right now is that the word Sajush is unheard of. You can almost never find it anywhere. It's not in Gita. I think Ramayana and Bhagavatam also may be some rare place. So while the, the other one, the sa, is in almost every other shloka, the word that sa is, Padanta sa is there. So in one single sutra, Panini combines something which is completely unheard of and something which is extremely important, back to back, which we don't know. So that's, that's why you need to read also. You know. If you just do Vyakaranam, you might think that Sa and Sajus are equally important. They are far from being important. And in fact, for this, for this class, the, forget about Sajus. We don't need it because that's, that's one in a million example. So we only take the Padanta Sa, so becomes Ru. So a simple rule again, these bites are very easy to digest. So padanta Sakara becomes Ru. Now what is this Ru? So ru is a, is a special Repa special ra. What's special about it? It has the anubandha, it has the it letter of u on it. Ru. Of course the ru is a nasal ru, so if, I, so if you put it in the nasalized form, she put it the, um, so you know, why does Pani put this u on there? Because there will be operation which we will see where the, the ru will undergo some operations which the other repas will not. So therefore, he puts this u u in those places where only those repas should undergo those operations. Other ordinary repas which didn't come 
which are not rules should not go the operation. So this rule, if I want to put it on here, um, have to, it has to be written like this really. Uh, yeah, I think also, I don't know if I mentioned to you last time, is that most of these textbooks nowadays, they don't put the uh, Anunasika Chinnam because they think it is Pashtam or, you know, they want to make um, the font is clumsy. But if, if, if you want to put the Ru, it should be Ru, it should be written like this, Ru. So it should be Anunasika Rung, it should be Rung, Rung, Sasaji Show, Rung. So now, it is simply when you do the upadesh ajananasika it, upadesh ajananasika it, that U is a marker. So anubandha lope. Anubandha lope means I'm removing the markers. You have only ra remaining. Um, ra. So that is how this special rule comes. This is such a show rule. Quick example, if you take a word like Ramaha, uh, uh, Ramas, it should be really Ramas to begin with. Ramas, you know, simple example, take manam, manam gachati, take example like that. Uh, so here what we had was that we had this Ramas, and because supting andam padam, which we saw today, the padanta sakara. So what's going to happen is that it's going to become into a, into a ru. Now, we don't see this ru normally remaining there. So because that rule is going to change to some other operations. But let's just start with such a you show the home. Okay. That's that's the first rule we want to look at. Now let's quickly look at those two, three rules which, which use this rule. And one of them actually now this is an interesting point, okay? We are going to go, go back into Sapa Sapta Jai. We're going to go back into six dot one. So you should immediately stop me and ask me how can we go back? to the Sapada Saptadhyayi after performing an operation in the Tripadi. Because as far as this Sapada Saptadhyayi is concerned, this operation did not happen. Purutra Siddham. You cannot cross that 8 to 1 and come back into these prior rules. We've been, we've been mentioning that so many times. So now all of a sudden I'm coming back. How is that? The answer to that is as follows. You'll see, what, you'll see why that is. Let's look at Sutam 61113. Yeah. Okay. Let's just, just go to Kashika for a second. Um, uh, let me see. Okay. Let me go to this Kashika for a second. And here, let's look at this 61113. 61113. Okay, it says ati ut iti vartate. See, Kashika first say that what is anuvritti is coming down. It says ati and ut is the anuvritti. So when short a follows and ut is the adesha. So these are coming from prior sutras. Ati, ata, ut. And then he gives the vritti. So if you go to Kashika blindly and just look at the first sentence, you may not get the vritti by the way. Because he might, he might have like a pre-lock to the vritti, you know. The Rutti is coming, but he wants to give you some introduction as to what might have, you know, Anurutti might be coming or something else might be understood. So he will he will start with that and then give the Vritti. So then Vritti comes here, is that Akarad Aplutad Uttarasya Ro Refasya. So the Refa should be of the Ru. Ro Refasya Ukara Anubandha Vishishtasya. In fact, he's being very kind. He's telling you now it should be Ukara Anubandha Vishishtasya. It should be qualified by the U as a marker. Okay, he's making it clear for us now. Akare Parataha, Akare, Aplute Akare Parataha, Ukara Adesha Bhavati. Also, one more thing is that, you know, that these Vrittis and the Mahabhasham and the Katya and Vartikams, Whatever usages that they give, they are also an authority in this language, okay? Particularly the Mahabhasham. See, Mahabhasham is a long text, you know, of many topics. And of course, there are many, many discussions back and forth and long pages after pages. But the language which is used there is supposed to be the, the, the Pramanam. So when Patanjali says something in Mahabhasham, it, it, it is following all the Panini rules 100%. 
seen Gita, we say, okay, Valmiki, we say, okay, he's not following Panini. Of course, Vedas may exceptions, you know. Anybody can violate Panini. But in the Mahabhashyam, also in Kashika, Siddhanta Kaumudi, all these grammatical texts, I shouldn't say all, particularly these, these three Munis, right? The Katyayana, Panini himself. Even Panini himself, when he uses something in Sutram, that is also Pramanam. And the Patanjali, he uses all this, because it just comes to my mind, because we're reading this Kashika Vritti reading now. When Kashika uses something like that, if that he has he has used all the Panini rules a hundred percent when they when they write when they write when they compose. So that becomes Pramana. When you have a, when you have a question somewhere, the sutra, when we say if this sutra means this, then Patanjali's writing will not make sense. Then we conclude that from his writing that ah, it should be like this. So that's just so you know on the back of the Gita is also Pramanam. But Vyakarnam wise, it, we can always make an exception and say this is this is Arsha Prayoga, like Arsha is Arsha Vidya, right? So Arsha Prayoga, this is an archaic, archaic rule and we can get by with that. Here we cannot. In grammatical text, they have to follow all the grammar rules a hundred percent. Now, in fact, Panini himself violates his own rules, by the way. That's also an interesting point. He himself will sometime, but Patanjali will not. So Patanjali and this Kashika and they will, they will not do that. Anyway, coming back to Anubhutti, we, Vritti, we said, Akarad Aplutad. Okay. Now, in this sutram, this Aplutad Aplute, we can drop that. Because why is that? This Pluta, Pluta all means like the, what is called, which is like prolated vowel, prolated. Like, hey Krishna, Agacha, that Krishna, that long, the three matras. Now, this usage is extremely rare in classical language. Gita zero, I think Ramayana also zero, Mahabhatam zero. In Vedas you have that, but we are not studying Vedas. So keep it simple for us right now. That Aplutad Aplute you don't need. Don't need that. So what is left? Only Ato, Roho, <coughs> Anuvritti of Ati, Ut. This. So when we have a short A, for by this Ru, for by a short A, this Ru becomes into an U. Example we will see in a, in a moment. The example for this Namo Narayana. Narayana, yeah. Namo Narayana. Yeah. This example is, I like to use this example for this sutram. Um, but there was a great Acharya of Vyakaranam who wrote this great text. And he, he recomposed all these rules and he gave these like names for them. Like you know, Namo Rama, Namo. It's called Harinama Vyakaranam. Harinama Amrita Vyakaranam. It was an uh, interesting text. Harinam Amrita Vyakaranam. So all these rules, he'll give names for them. So this is like Namo Narayana rule, something like, something like that, you know. So anyway, Namo Narayana, because in Namaha, we have the, you know, actually, I'm sorry, bad example, that's not a correct example. I take it back. Shivoham is the one that you want, Shivoham. Because we need the short A on both sides. So we can Shivaha, Aham. So we have the Visarga for, preceded by A, followed by A. That then we have Shivas Aham to begin with. The sa becomes sasaju shoru and ru becomes u by the sutram and then ad gunaha. Your steps quickly is the uh, go back to the word document. Uh, I hope I didn't go too fast. You get the uh, when you go here, you say if you say um, I'm sorry, we'll give the um, shivaha tas aham. Uh -huh. Now we do have the A, uh, we should start with Shivas Aham really to begin with, because the Visarga will not come, Shivas Aham, um, Shivas Aham, because when we decline Shiva, add the declension endings to, this is normally singular form, it becomes Shivas Tas Aham, and then this is a Supti Antam Param, so from 8 to 66, Sasaju Shoruhu, become Shiva Ru Aham become like that and then okay and then by this rule atoro or prutar prute this ru will become into an u by this six one which we just saw six one one thirteen when this ru is sandwiched between this a and a on both sides then we can make it into an u so shiva plus u plus aham and now we can use the ad gunaha. 
between the A and the U will become Shivoham. Become Shivoham. So we can use that rule which we just learned. Shivoham. Uh, become uh, Shivoham. And now, not only that, we can now also use that rule. Engaf Padanta Dati. We just learned that also, right? I'm sorry, Shivoham. <laughs> not Shavoham. Shavo is a corpse. <laughs> sorry, it's a bad mistake. Uh, it becomes Shivoham. So Shivoham, now we can use the one we learned this, this, this earlier today, Ingraf Padanta Dati. So this A will become the Puru Parayoho Eka Deshaha will be the O. So this will, this will become a, if you want to put, you can put the Avagraha. Shivoham. So those are the steps that we have. Now, one point, and please find examples in Gita. You'll find a number of them in Gita. If you have time, maybe we can look at one or two of them. If you have time, um, look at this. Look for this combination of this O for the Avagraha. Most likely, this is what has happened. Is you had a Sa. Sa became a Ru by Sasiju Choruhu. And the Ru became an U by Atoro or Putala Plute. Then Adgunaha, the A plus U became O. And finally, Enga Padantad Ati, we get the Ekadesha, the Purupa. So we become Purupam. So we become the Shivoham. So that's this rule. Look for them examples in Gita. Now, the question which I skipped earlier is that how come this Ru which was created in Tripadi, we came back to Sapadi and let this rule operate in the sub in the Sapadi, Sapadi Saptadaya, I should say, I'm sorry. At this habit, you know, Sapadi is like a short term, which is not really correct. I should be saying Sapada Saptadhyayi, Sapada Saptadhyayi is the right, is the right term. How come we came back? The answer is as follows. Is that the Ru only comes in that 8266. If we don't allow the 61113 to see that Ru, it will become a useless Ru. It will never apply anywhere at all whatsoever. So Vachana Samarachat, because Pani said so, and no Pani Ru is, is, can be useless, it should be removed. So that is why we allow this sutra number 61113 to see that rule which was created in the Tripadi. Normally this should not happen. But if we don't allow it to happen here, this rule becomes useless. It will not apply anywhere whatsoever. It will have no chance because the rule only is created in 68 to 66. So, so this rule has to be given a chance. So this is how, and now why does Pani do that by the way? Why didn't he put it back there? Why put it here? The answer to that is that Anuvritti is available for Pani right here. See the 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 uh, the the um, to make it very concise is a very very high priority in the Ashtadhyay, very high because it has to be memorized. It has to be memorized. If you memorize, you say, "Hey, Pani, you didn't make it concise. You memorize more and more stuff. You didn't make it enough. You could have done this here. You could have done it there." So she don't want to hear that. So we have to make it as concise as possible. Anuvritti of the Ati and which was available here to Panini in 6.1. And he also knows that if he puts the Ru over here, it has to be honored. Otherwise, it will become useless. So to keep it, to use Anuvritti judiciously, he puts this Ru in the Sapa Sapta Jai, even though, even though it should be Asiddham, that the Ru should be Asiddham over here. So this is an example how we came back, because there is an overriding factor. And the overriding factor is no rule is useless. That's how we came back. So this is one situation with the rules, and we'll, we'll practice this more and more. I know we have only 10, 12 minutes left. Maybe give you a couple more rules. Let me give you the two rules where rule is used again. This is one case. Again, what is required? It requires a short R to proceed, a short R to follow, and a rule in between. That rule becomes U. Then we do Ad Granaha. Then we do Inga Padantad Ati. That's the sequence. And remember, remember the form Shivoham. Shivoham is the example for this rule. Okay. Now, the, the next one that I want to give you is the Namo Narayana, which I tried to come to before. Let's look at Yashtadhyayi, come back to the other screen. Um, okay. Let's see the Yashtadhyayi again, and let's see under this one. We just, right now we saw the six one. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, we, we saw 61113, by the way. This one that we saw. Atoro, the Prutha, the Plute. Now, the, we want to see the next one, Hashicha. That is Namo Narayana. 
what does that say is let's go to Kashigamura section first of all uh, 6 1 1 1 next sutram only 6 1 1 1 4 so the same anurutis are coming down which is hashicha so hash means what all the soft consonants in the English mudubarana so mudubarana pare when you have that but same connection the prior sh if proceeding should be short as you proceeding <coughs> followed by any hash then also the rule becomes into an u so it says hashicha parataha ataha uttarasya roho ukaradesha bhavati says purusho yati purusho hasati purusho dadati you give three examples so we require a short r to proceed then we require a hushed letter to follow hush means short i mean sorry soft consonant mudubarna when that happens then you get the ru becoming into a u and same ad gunaha again so if you want to put in put in uh, on the screen here um, so these two sutra by the way will not apply if you have another repa okay let me, let me look at that I'll, I'll mention that to you also a second um, uh, okay let us see this one now uh, and we'll see why Panini wants the ru and not any other repa so when you say namaha namaha narayana yeah, i should say namaha na ra ya na ya okay now it was it was namas to begin with namas because the avya is namas and not into namaha it's namas so, so that namas we had that padanta sakara so sasaju shoru is the first step the sa becomes into as we saw before make it into a ru now we have the ru which is preceded by short a for by a hushed consonant. So the ru becomes into an u. It becomes it becomes uh, nama plus u plus the narayanaya. Okay. And then as before we get the adgunaha between the nama and the u, it becomes namo. Namo plus narayanaya. Okay, now, so why did this, of course, of very important rule, it's come many, many times. Now, why did Panini say only rules should take this, not any other repa? Let's say it was, it was the word of Spunar, okay. Let's go to the prize, Shivam example. Let's see the Spunar Aham, Punar Aham. See that example, Punar Aham. Now, in Punar, this is not a <coughs> ru. It's the ordinary repa, Samanya repa. It's not a ru. So, if we say Punar Aham, these rules will not apply, we just apply it. It will, be, it will stay punaraham, that's all. There's no more, I mean, you can write it together like this, but beyond that, there's no more Sandhi rule here. Punaraham. Because that, that this refa of punar is not a rule. It was not punas to begin with. It was not punas. Because Pradipatikam is punar. This is an avya, punar. It is listed as punar in the original form. So when you do punaraham, it does not become punoham. It stays punaraham. Similarly, down here, says punar narayanaya. We stay punar only. It will not become puno narayanaya. So now you know why Pani created this rule. Because he wants some rules to apply only to that rule and not to all repa. So these are the two that we have seen. We we'll see one more and then we'll stop. We we'll see one more where the, this rule comes into play. Uh, when you go forward, we see many examples, so don't worry, you practice this. But these are going to come all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. Almost, you know, many, many times. Uh, let's go to this. this. So these ones that, again, this rule also was in the Sapa Sapta Jai, I already told you before that this Hashicha also is depending on the, on the rule to have an operation. The rule Ashita Karyam it is. It will not have any chance at all unless it is allowed to see the rule from the Tripadi section. That's why we have to come back here and apply it, even though it should have been a siddha. Okay, let's move on. Um, I want to show one more rule for today, and that is the Bho Bhago Vagho Purvasya Yoshi. That comes in the now. This is this is this is coming in 8.3. So it, it is it is. We don't have to come back or anything. We can just do it in the usual way. Bho Bhago Vagho Purvasya Yoshi. 
uh, let me give you the number for that. Bhava Bhagava Bhava Purvasya Yoshi. Give me one second. What that rule that, that what that rule says is that when you have one of these three terms, the bhos, bhagos, aghos, these are avyas. Bho is 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 an address of respect. We say bho acharya. Bhago is address for a divinity. It means that when you talk to uh, to say bhago narayana, say bho bhago, and aghas is a contemptive address. It says that it, it means that it is addressing somebody who is who is you know what you contend. You say you can say ago dhurtaha. So you know so that that kind of thing. Now this this number is is eight three seventeen. Bho bhago bho purvasya yuvashi. Now same thing here. Even the sutra is bho bhago ago purvasya. Right? We don't need the bho bhago ago because there are only three specific terms which are not that commonly used. Of course, bho is used, but still not nearly as common as the last one, which is apurvasya. Apurvasya yaha ashi. Let's just take only that part is enough for us. Okay. Apurvasya yaha ashi. Anurvati of rho is coming down from the prior sutra. So what does it say? If you have this ru preceded by the avarna now, apurvasya means avarna, long or short, that becomes a ya. If the ash letter follows, now, ash is what? Ash equals ash plus hash. So, it, equals, it includes all vowels plus soft consonants. So, if you have the ru preceded by, by a varna, followed by the ash letter, then this ya comes there. It becomes quick, let's take a quick example. Let's say, ramaha agachati, if you take that example is the, uh, one more thing I want to point out to you is that the, the, the rule which, which we saw before, Atororo Pratava Plute, was an exception to this one partially. So that required a short a on either side of the rule. This one requires an a varna, long or short to proceed, and any ash to follow. So clearly that rule 61130 has a subdomain to this one, because both require the rule. This one allows the a uh, varna to proceed, any long or short a uh, to proceed. It can be a uh or a. Uh. That one requires only short a, uh, so that's a subdomain. This one requires any ash to follow. That requires only short a uh, to follow. So the Atharora Pruta Pruta is an exception to this to this rule 8317. Eight, it has to be given a chance in its small domain to apply. So that is an exception. So if it's, if it's a short a uh, on both sides, you have to go to 61113. Okay, but other situations where you have either long or short uh, preceding followed by any ash, it becomes a becomes a jakara. So let's let's go there for a second. Um, even the even the sutra hashicha which we saw, right? There also will will take a part of this. So that required what? Hashicha required a short r to proceed and any hash letter to follow. Now we're saying long or short r followed by the ash to follow. So that so this this has a much bigger domain than both those rules. So both those rules will have a say when it comes, you know, um, will take over in their small domains. Okay, I know we're almost out of time. Let me just give one example. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, I think I gave it on the wrong screen. Okay. Here we go. Let me switch to a start there for a second. So we were we looking at I'm looking at this rule eight three seventeen. Bho bhago bhago purvasya yoshi. That's what we're looking at. And example for you, if you go if you go to this one, if you say Ramas say Ramas plus Agachati. Rama Agachati. In fact let's, let's do that. Let's take Arjuna Vacha, how about that? We can we can use that one, Arjuna Vacha, Dhritarashtra Vacha, any one of those. So Arjuna, Arjuna it is to begin with, plus Vacha. Hmm. Okay, now Sasaju Shoru, which you already learned, we get a Ru in this place, right? Well, let's check the conditions now. What do we have? We have the Ru preceded by a A, so it is it is definitely Avarna. And it's followed by the 
um, by the U. Now, U is an Ash letter. So by the Sutram, Bho Bhago Bho Purvasya Yoshi, this should become into a Ya, become, becomes Arjunai Uvacha. Arju, Ar, Ju, Nai, Arjunai Uvacha. Now, now what happened to that Ya? So that's the next tool, which is Lopa Shakalyasya. The Lopa Shakalyasya. See, Shakalya was a great Acharya of Vyakaranam before Panini. And he came, I think he was the first one, he was the one who did the Padapata, Padacheda of the Rig Veda. So Panini mentioned Shakalya in more than one place in the, in the, in the Ashtadhyayi. And this one is one rule which he mentioned, Lopa Shakalyasya. What that says is that if you have the, the Ya or Va, which is preceded by the, the A Varna, then in that case, this is 8.3.19, right here, 8.3.19, switch to the other screen. Okay, promise, last two for the day. This is promise, no more. Um, Lopa Shakal, yes, yeah. 8.3.19. So what the interest code, the Ashta Jai, 8.3.19. Uh, it says vakara yakara yoho. If you have a va or a ya, so right now we only have ya, but if you have va also, padanta yoho should be padanta. Avarna purva yoho, preceded by avarna, which we all have. We all have because when we have arjuna yuvacha, we have the ya. It is padanta supti gantam padam is there. It's preceded by the avarna that also we have. Lopa Bhavati Shakalyasya Acharyasya Matena Ashiparataha. In the opinion of Shakalya Acharya only, it takes Lopa. This is Pani's way of introducing a Vikalpa. He will mention Acharya's name. He says Spotayanasya, Galavasya, you know, Shakatayanasya, Shakalyasya. So that means that in that Acharya's opinion only it is becoming a Lopa. Means Annesham Acharyana Mate Lopa Na Bhavati. So in the other Acharya, including Panini maybe, it will not take Lopa. So this is Vikataka Vikalpa. Now, one thing about this rule is that even though this rule says that it could be Vakara or Yakara, followed by an Ash, Padanta, it takes Lopa as a matter of convention. And I don't have a better answer, it's a matter of convention. The Yakara always drops and the Vakara never drops. The Yakara always drops. The Vakara never drops. Now, how do we know that? By usage. By usage. There might be some very rare excuse. I'll say nothing about, as I said to your point, he doesn't care. There might be one, some rare form in some Vedic text where the Yakara might stay. And for that, he will say, this is optional though. But for us, for this class, 99.9999999% the Yakara always drops. The Vakara never drops. So take it as a rule, in kind of as a rule for us. So we had a condition in Arjuna Yuvacha when we did, in by the Shakalya rule, Lopa Shakalya. So by Shakalya comes in other in Ashtadi in other places also, not only the sutram. But this is one of his most important sutrams, is Lopa Shakalya. Uh, I guess he became immortal by the Lopa Shakalya. So it's more than 2,000 years ago we still talking about Shakalya. So Lopa Shakalya, this, 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 yeah, it is Padanta is preceded by short A and short by Avarna, any Avarna, we have short A in this case, followed by an Ash, it is going to drop, come Arjuna Uvacha. Now this Yakara dropping is a Tripadi Karyam. It will not be seen by the Ad Gunaha. Ad Gunaha was coming way back in the, in the um, Sapada Saptadhyaya. That is why it does not become Arjuna Uvacha. Arjuna Uvacha will stay Arjuna Uvacha. It is not a Sandhi violation. So now you know why. Is that we did, we, we applied 8.3.19 Lopa Shakalya. So removed the Yakara. As far as Ad Guna is concerned, the Yakara is still there. It doesn't see this operation. So it cannot apply. Even though we see now Arjuna Uvacha, Ad Guna sees Arjuna Uvacha. You know, only like in very hardcore grammar text you see Arjuna Yuvacha, Arjuna Yuvacha form, you will not see. Okay, so time is up, uh, four minutes over. We'll continue with this. This is also very common, of course, the very first Shabin Gita, right?
Dhritarashtra Uvacha, right there, very first one, Lopa Shakal Lesha, immediately. So, we, today we did one Atsandhi room, Yenga Padanta Adati, we did Anuswara Sandhi, Monuswaraha, then the Vapadanta Sya Parasavarana, then we saw Sasaju Shoruho, we saw where the room was used, we saw three sutras, Atoro Raputara Plute, Hashicha, and then Bho Bhago Gopur Vasya Yavashi, and then Lopa Shakalya. We practice next time, so let's take a break, and from 6, 4.30 we'll do some Ramayanam reading, okay, so we'll, we'll start with the Bala Ramayanam, we'll so you see some usages and some vocabulary. Ramo Raja Manish Sada Vijayate Ramam Ramesham Bhaje Ramena Bhita Nishachar Chamu Ramayatas Mainamaha Rama Nasti Paranam Parataram Rama Sada Sosmiaham Rame Chitra Sada Bhotame Bho Rama Mamudhara Rama Rameti Rameti Rame Rame Mano Rame Sahasthanam Tatulyam Rama Nama Varanane Sri Rama Nama Varanana On Nama Iti we will keep the 